Hey guys, welcome to another very exciting color correction tutorial. My name's Matt Scott, and if you haven't checked out my blog already, you should do that, mattscottvisuals.com. Uh, and uh, yeah, here I have a whole bunch of free lighting setup tutorials and a whole bunch of color grading tutorials for DaVinci and Edius, and uh, yeah, you should check it out. It's all free, it's freaking awesome, possibly the best blog on the internet. But today what I want to talk about is um, what is the difference between color correction and color grading and what is this elusive film look that we're all trying to achieve and how do we achieve it? So the film look, in my opinion, has little to do with color correction. So color correction is obviously very useful and in some instances, like this one, it can completely transform a scene. So here you can see I shot this uh, with red scarlet and I missed the sunset, but then with a few simple steps I added a sun, some glow, put it behind the clouds and added some um, color. So that looks pretty awesome. Completely different scene. Color correction slash compositing played a huge role in this shot. Um, actually, there's a complete tutorial on that if you want to check it out. It goes for an hour or some shit like that. But anyway, what about this shot? So here we have a clip. Um, thank you to Lucas Scheffel who let me actually use this clip for this tutorial. Um, I shot this film with him and the crew about a month ago. It's called Dead Therapy. Check that out on Facebook, Dead Therapy Film. Um, written by Brett Bentman, directed by Lucas Scheffel. Hell of a film, can't wait to see it. So, um, this shot has some pretty basic color correction done to it, but it looks freaking awesome, dare I say, it looks freaking awesome. And um, I've actually consulted some of my snobby film mates who are obsessed with shooting film for whatever dumb reason, and um, they all asked me, um, without me saying, did you shoot this on film? So it made me wonder what the hell is this film look and uh, what makes something look like film what is the film look so you might argue that the film look means that it's the way the highlights roll off it's the way there's a grain and structure to you know a texture to the film no 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 it's 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 a lot more than that trust me the film look cannot be just done in post the film look starts in pre-production the film look starts with an awesome location like this it starts with amazing actors it starts with really good blocking obviously lighting lens choice camera movement it also has to do with things like i made sure that this dust was in the air before every single take. I ran up those stairs, I grabbed a broom, and I smashed it around to add that atmospheric particle shit that you see right there. It totally adds to this shot. The heavy 1.2 HMI backlight, that adds to this shot. The reflection in his eye of the reflector filling in his face, it adds to this shot. The guy who seems completely nervous and worried that he's gonna get attacked by a freaking zombie. All of this stuff is coming together, and all of this stuff um, is creating that film look. So the color grading is the final step. So here's a very flat red log film. We've added contrast, we've added color, we've added film grain, we've added a bloom to the highlights, but you get my point, right? The film look um, starts before, well, well before you press record and um, has little to do with post-production. Let's have a look at what we do do in post when all of those things have come together and you have something really cool to work with. Okay, so we're not in DaVinci Resolve, but we are going to be doing some, dare I say, advanced color correction. I'm not a colorist, by the way. I just do this because I have a, a strong belief that if you understand your medium and know how to color correct, it gives you a huge advantage on set behind the camera as a DOP. So we're using a program today called EDIUS. This is EDIUS 7 Pro, and um, in my opinion, it's the best NLE out there. It's the fastest, it's real time, it accepts any footage from any camera. And um, did I mention it's real time? So anyway, it's very, very powerful. And uh, yeah, you should check it out, the free 30 day trial. Anyway, let's have a look at how I started grading this shot. Here is the original here. One thing you'll notice straight away is um, this blue box here is wider than 16 by nine. So that is part of the film look, right? That cinemascope look. Well, sometimes no, but generally speaking, uh, yes. A wide screen format, wider than 16.9, generally people would say yes, that's more of a film look. So, how do we get that? Well, we just went to settings, project settings, and um, if we change those current settings, instead of just choosing 16.9, 19.20, 10.80, I've gone custom and gone 19.20 by 8.14, making sure pixel aspect ratio is 1 to 1. And uh, yeah, so this is roughly equivalent to a 2.35 to 1 aspect ratio. So, that's pretty cool. And if we just go to the information tab on this clip, so we click on the clip, go to the information and double click the layout tool. The layout tool allows us to move this shot around, uh, rotate it, resize it, all that stuff. But if we just have a look at the default settings, you'll notice 16.9 here. And what we need to do is fit the width of this shot to the frame. So we just double click fit width and boom, there we go. So because I did frame this for 2.35 to one, um, everything should stay nicely in that frame. So that's, you know, we're getting there, we're getting there. So let's have a look. 
let's just pause this on a nicer frame. You can see how far I've come with this grade. But remember, the film look already happened way before we started grading this. But anyway, enough of that. Let's have a look at what the next step would be. We've got our cinema scope aspect ratio. Next thing we want to do, and the thing I always do for every shot, is adjust contrast. So to do that, we need to bring up our waveform monitor and our scopes. To do that, we're going to go to effects. And what we could do is go to color balance. Now this is just a standard set of filters. Everything I show you today is going to be a standard feature that you should be able to find in any professional editor. But what we could do is go straight to our contrast and just increase contrast. And as you can see here, the red log image has no true black point and no true white point because it's been shot super flat to retain that information. And as soon as we slide our contrast, it's created a nice black point and a nice white point. And we could always split the screen and check that out. Now, I never use this because I feel like it's a limiting tool. The problem with these sliders are we could also increase chrominance values as well. And we could also try and correct our uh, shot. So now, you know, we've got a pretty good looking shot, right? But the problem with this is all of these adjustments are linear adjustments. In other words, the chrominance and the contrast have been adjusted on a linear scale. Every single pixel is being affected by 53 in this example. So if I want to adjust things non-linearly, you've got to get used to what's called a YUV curve or an RGB curve. Now curves, let's just drop that filter on and double click on the properties for that. A curve allows us to adjust things non-linearly. Non-linearly. And um, let me explain that with actually by using it. So we can add anchor points to this curve and those anchor points allow us to adjust different parts of the image by different values. And what that's going to allow us to do is create what's called an S-curve. So I'm sure you've all heard of an S-curve before or a contrast curve. Well, that's exactly what this shape represents. So with this S-curve, it allows us to create a black point and it allows us to create a white point but it also allows for this nice roll off here, as you can see, and that's something the um, linear slider does not allow for, but it also allows us to lock off certain areas and only affect certain areas. For example, I can slide this down here so we still have roughly the same curve, but now I can just bring up those shadows even more while still maintaining that black point. What I could do as well is blow out those highlights or back them off a little bit. Or what I could do is just lock this mid area here and only affect that pretty cool. So the idea with curves is it gives you a lot more freedom and a lot more control over the contrast that you're creating. And remember, you can always go back and check this. We can always split the screen and you can see what I've done there. Now, the beauty of Edius's YUV curve is it allows you to only work on Y, which represents luminance, and the U and the V channels, we can work on those separately. So now that we've created contrast, and let's make sure I've got a nice black point there, um, what I'm going to do next is add color saturation because remember red log film is very desaturated as well. So the next thing I'm going to do is play with the U and the V. So U represents half of the color and Y represents the other half of color. So what I'm going to do now instead of creating curves which is a little bit fiddly we don't actually need to do that. All we're going to do is just slide this point here, this point here and do that exactly the same on both. And what you can see now is the shot is a lot more saturated. And if we move this down here what you want to do with this scope here, which represents color and saturation, and you can see R represents red, cyan, blue, green, yellow, magenta, basically your three primary colors and your tints. Um, basically what we want to do now is get this group of color, that's all the color that lies in this image, to sit in the center. So what we can do is grab our color points, and if we move this point to the left or right, you can see what's happening there. So we want all this information to sort of sit right smack bang in the middle, to make sure we've balanced our colors out because maybe my white balance was a little warm. So now you can see the before and after of one filter, the YUV curve, how powerful it is. We've fixed our contrast and we've fixed our color balance. So let's press OK on there. Remember this is real time and um, this is YUV uncompressed 10-bit. We're working in a 10-bit color space which is also very important. Not all professional editors allow you to color correct in 10-bit. So if we go to settings, project settings, we can always check that here. So quantization bit rate is 10 bit, great. So now that we've fixed both of those things, it's time to start having a look at this image and picking on it, looking at the things that you do and don't like, and um, you know, let's think about how we can really force our viewer to look where we want them to look. I mean, I don't want our viewer looking over here at this door that I put there, or I don't want them to be looking at this uh, extension cable here with a bit of gaff tape on it. I want them to be looking at this guy's face and the blood 
on his face. So, how are we going to do that? We've adjusted color, we've adjusted contrast, pretty happy with that. Let's piss this off, go effects, and I'm going to use a mask. Now, Edius's mask tool is a little bit different to other editing programs mask tools because it's multi-point and it's Bezier. And that allows you to manipulate that and you know, animate it and soften the edges and blah blah blah. It's awesome. So, we're not going to use it that uh, complicated though. We're just going to draw an oval here. And we're also going to soften the edges of that oval by about, whoa, 800 pixels. And then on the inside of the mask, we can add multiple filters. Now this is, the way this is set up is pretty cool. It can allow us to add filters on the inside, filters on the outside, um, an edge filter, and we can always lower the intensity of the filters. We can always lower the opacity of that part of the mask. So in this instance, all I'm going to do is go filter, enable filter, and then I'm going to open what's called a combine filter, which allows us to add more than one. And I'm going to add two filters in here. One of them we know very well about, the YV curve, and the other one is pretty self-explanatory, and it's called sharpness. Now, when you're shooting red footage, um, it is raw, right? So raw represents a file format that can be changed after the fact. In other words, we can change ISO, we can change white balance, but we do need to add things like contrast and color, and we need to add sharpness. So, what we're going to do is only sharpen on the inside of this mask. And we're going to do that by quite a lot, by 35. A value of 35 is looking pretty good. But the next thing I'm going to do is go and open up the YUV curve. And I'm going to add some brightness here, but I'm also going to add contrast. Just to really bring out some detail in Moz's face. And um, <laughs> let's just have a look at the before and after here. We just split the screen and check it out. Pretty cool. So I haven't added contrast to the whole scene. All I've done is added contrast to everything inside of that mask. I've also added sharpness as well. So let's press OK. And um, let's just have a look. Set this to a uh, single screen. We can always just go view and go single mode, or I've set these uh, shortcuts to one and two. So I'm just going to press one. And uh, OK, so now let's scrutinize this image. What don't I like about it? Or how come it doesn't look like film just yet? Well, there's a few things. It doesn't have any film grain added to it. And, um, you know, that typical Hollywood look, there's no blue in the shadow. So what we could do next is go Effect, Three-Way Color Corrector. And the Three-Way Color Corrector, what I can do is push blue into the shadow. So the way these color wheels work, and they work the same in pretty much every color correction suite, is the left wheel represents our shadows or our lift in another code word. The gray balance, our middle wheel, represents our midtones, or gamma. And our right-hand side wheel, the white balance, represents our highlights slash gain. And um, as you can see here, this is only affecting my highlights and blah, 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 you get the idea. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to add some saturation to the mids. And you'll see that's adding some saturation. It's actually causing a little bit of problems here with uh, Maurice's ears, but we're going to fix that. I'm also going to add saturation to the shadows and saturation to the highlights. Now this is a little bit different than using the saturation slider in the uh, color correction one I showed you in the very beginning because it's just a bit gentler, but it also allows us to maybe not add so much into the shadows, or maybe it allows us to push blue into the shadows. So if we just move this down here and you watch this door, you'll notice if I go around, let's just default that. What I can do is add saturation and just slowly start pushing blue into this shot, so not too much. I'm thinking that looks kind of cool. And remember, we can always just split the screen and just have a look before and after. So we're getting there. Not too bad. We can always just push a bit of warmth into the mids as well. Maybe. Could look cool. We can always try. And we can just fix our whites up. They don't look white anymore. They're a bit blue. So I just push the opposite color in. Whenever you're trying to correct a color, all you need to do is push the opposite color in. So now we've done some further color correction, added some extra saturation, and we've added a tint to the blues. So one more thing we could do, and um, let's just bring up our scopes. So I'll just press OK. And our scope little shortcut is here, or I've just set a keyboard shortcut. Let's have a look at our scopes. Now we have a couple of problems now. Our whites are clipping. In other words, our whites are beyond white, so detail is being lost. Our reds are extremely overexposed, they're way outside the box, and those reds are right here in this guy's ears. So what we can do is just monitor what's happening as we move this stuff around. So maybe I want something around there is kind of cool. Mm, I'll cool it off a bit, actually. 
Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. But yeah, these reds are a problem, so we need to fix that. But also, what we can do in here, use these gentle roll-off um, contrast adjusters for the highlights, for example, and watch what happens to my clipped highlights. I'm just going to bring them down to a safe level. Pretty cool. And same thing can be said with our shadows. We could drop that black point so it's perfectly black and raise our mids a little bit just to give us a nice looking image. I think that looks pretty good. Okay, so we do have a problem now though that our ears are way too saturated. And um, let's just look at a quick before and after here. I'm just gonna full screen this and um, you can see we've come quite a ways. Pretty cool. But there's one key thing that I want to do to this that's really going to help transform the shot. First of all, let's just fix these ears. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, you might think that we could use a mask and, you know, draw a perfect mask around the ears and track them, but I'm going to do something a lot simpler and a lot more efficient. We're going to use the three-way color corrector again, but this time we're going to use it slightly differently. Now, how this works is we understand how the wheels work, right? What about this limiting tool, or better known as a qualifying tool? Well, the way it works is we have three questions that we need to answer. What color are the ears? How saturated are the ears? And how bright are they? So once you enable all these qualifiers and you turn your key on, nothing seems to have happened because we have these range selectors here. And at the moment, saturation is only looking in the mid-tones. Luminance is only looking in the mid-tones and the hue is only looking at the green and blue. So if I just slide that over to orange, check it out. My key is revealing the ears. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Now we could increase the luminance range to increase darker portions of the ear. We could also increase saturation range in the shadows. But you know what? I'm going to keep it about there. Turn my key off and now that's going to allow me to desaturate those mids just a little bit. We could also color correct them as well. It's not looking too bad at all. So now you can see, we just split the screen. Red ears, not so red ears. Way overly saturated, distracting red ears. Normal looking ear, pretty cool. Okay, and we don't have to track anything, that's just happening um, right off the bat because we have qualified that portion of the image, pretty cool. So we could always go in there, refine that, fix it up a little bit, but let's have a look at making this look more like film. How are we gonna do that? Here's the original shot, looks terrible. We've come a long way. Let's go ahead and create that filmic glow. Now there are a number of ways to do this. You could probably do this about six different ways, but I found this way to be very effective. What I'm gonna do is duplicate this track. One quick way to do it is click the mouse, drag it up, press control and let go. That's gonna duplicate that shot for you. Now I can just delete these filters all but the YUV curve. Now I'll show you why in a second. What I'm gonna do is double click the YUV curve. And it's gonna default these and default this as well. So now what we're looking at is this top track here with no effects done to it at all. But if we open our YUV, what I'm gonna do is just crush the hell out of the blacks to the point where there's virtually no detail in them. Crushing my midtones as well. But what I'm not doing is crushing my whites. I want my highlights intact and I don't want any color here. So what I'm gonna do is just delete all color. If we grab our color channels, just put them in the middle that's going to create a black and white image. And all we're going to use this for is to control the amount of glow we have and where our glow shines through. So what I'm doing is just creating a very high contrast image, making sure that I have pure black in here. And um, yeah, let's just press OK and have a look at that. So here is the shot on top of our color corrected shot. So what we're going to do now is enable that again and go Effect. And we're going to blur that. So we use the beautiful 10-bit Gaussian blur, not just the standard blur. This Gaussian blur is absolutely stunning. And what we're going to do is drop that down to 2. Remember, this Gaussian blur is real-time. No rendering, pretty awesome. So we've got 2% blur there. It's looking pretty good. But how are we going to blend this with the shot underneath? So what you could do, maybe, is use your um, transparency slider and just lower the opacity of that. And you can see that's sort of giving a kind of glow but I'll tell you a better way to blend video tracks. If we go Effect, go down to Keyers, and Blend, then we've got all these blending modes just like we would have in Photoshop. So I'm going to use Screen, and I'm going to drag that onto the transparency portion of my video track, and check it out. Now, if we just enable and disable this track, you can see what it's doing. It's adding this beautiful glow. 
And the cool thing is we have absolute, complete control over how much glow, what portions of the image glow. Uh, it's a really, really cool way to create film glow, in my opinion. We could always tint the glow as well, make it yellow, for example. Um, we can just increase our Gaussian blur, and that's going to increase the amount of glow. I'm going to leave that at 2%, because I prefer using the YUV curve to increase or decrease where that glow is coming through. And one way to check that is just to turn off the screen mode and play with the YUV curve. And basically anything that's white or gray is going to start allowing that glow to shine through. So I don't necessarily want any glow on his face because I want that to be fully sharp with full details. So I'll keep that black. Anything that's white is going to allow glow through. And the whiter it is, the more glow shines through. So we go back, click on transparency, turn our key back on, and we've got this beautiful looking glow. I'm pretty damn happy with that. And if we have a look at the original shot, let's just uh, kill all these effects here and just go full screen. You can see it's really coming together. Maybe I've sharpened this a little bit too much. So I could always go back to my original, go to the mask, open the properties inside the mask, and just delete some of that sharpness. Maybe about 20. Should be good. Let's press OK. OK. So looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. One more thing we could do to this. Could do with a bit of tweaking. I feel like my blacks are a little bit crushed and they're not truly black either, so I'm going to fix that in a second. But another thing we could do is add film grain. Now, Idius has a pretty cool old movie effect, and you might think this is a cheesy effect, so I'm just going to add this. And by default, it is pretty damn cheesy. I mean, it's got dust and hair and scratch noise and frame jitter and all that stuff. Let's turn all that off. You could just add film grain, and the more you add, obviously, the more appears. Now, this is pretty simple film grain and I've gone over the top with it there but I'm going to show you a much much nicer real film grain that I created for free. If you um, go back to my blog I've got um, on the download section you've got Matt's homebrew for free 4k film grain and basically what it is is real scanned film grain that's been animated and um, if we just drop that on top of here and just fit the width of that, remember this is 4k film grain and um, in that regard, what I might do is just expand it beyond its 50%, which has been scaled down to 1080p. I'm going to make that maybe 75% and press OK. And then once again, we're going to blend that using a blending mode, but this time I'm going to use Overlay. Now we've got this awesome film grain that maybe 75% is a bit chunky, so we can always go back. Remember, the smaller it is, the finer the grain structure, so we go back to the Layout tool. And I'm going to make that turn that back to 50% and press OK. Now remember, this is a video layer. So this layer we can change the opacity of, we can tint it if we like, and uh, yeah, it's a realistic film grain that you can compare to um, film grain that you purchase. I've compared it to stuff that I've purchased, and I think it's just as good. So, for free, download that shit, it's sick. So we're starting to get this film look, it's looking pretty damn good. Um, we've got film glow, we've got film grain. What about this tint in the blacks? I'm not really happy with that. I mean, we do have a bit of blue in the shadows. I'm happy with blue in the shadows, but actual black blacks, I want that. And um, the other thing too, I'm going to raise my blacks a little bit and add a little bit more detail to those shadows. So I can just go to my YUV curve here. Let's pump that up a little bit. It's looking a bit better. And then what I'm going to do is go effect, and we'll use three-way color corrector again. So remember, we're only using three filters, really. Once you understand the power of these filters, um, you can pretty much do anything. And this is the same for DaVinci Resolve. Same for anything. So what we're going to do is just look at the luminance values here, and we're going to qualify only the darkest parts of the image. So if we slide this selected to the left, so anything that is white will be the thing that we affect. So what we want to do is just only get the darkest parts of the image, which are about here. And if these have a tint of blue in them, I'm going to kill that blue right now just by desaturating the shadows and boom you can see that there let's just resaturate them put blue in them and you can see this is the only area that I'm affecting we just default that desaturate it and we could also crush it if we liked so now we've crushed that but we've still got a nice little bit of contrast between here and here I'm pretty happy with that let's press OK and we're in business so three-way color corrector YUV curve the mask and learning how to qualify. These techniques are very, very powerful and they work across the board. Could I do this in DaVinci Resolve? Of course I could. Could I do this in Premiere Pro? Pretty much, although Premiere Pro's mask is absolutely pathetic. Um, could I do this in Final Cut X? Hell yeah, I could. All of these 
tools that I've just showed you are standard color correction tools. It's just about how do you use them, but it's more about what do you look at? What do you want to change about an image? What do you want your audience to focus on? Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm sorry if I've gone a bit quickly, and if I have, I have a ton of other tutorials there that go through this um, in much, much more detail. So I also have a very cool project coming up where I will be giving away the footage um, I'll be sponsored by Grass Valley, the creators of this editor. They've sponsored me to create a whole tutorial set, which is going to be really cool. Um, but the cool part about it is you'll be able to download the original R3Ds with the project and uh, you'll be able to work along with it. So um, keep visiting my blog. Um, I can't say that enough. This is basically how I earn my money. Um, is through giving away all this stuff for free and it helps me get work. So I want to shoot the biggest and best features in the world. That is my goal. I'm not even joking. Help me get there. Um, hopefully these tutorials and this stuff helps you. And uh, yeah, if we're not friends on Facebook, we should be. Check it out. Um, Facebook's cool. This coffee, oh my god, it's so good. I just came back from Japan and um, I'm addicted to this stuff, so I bought a slab. Peace!